Hey, this is CND Channel. I'm Chris. This is MMA for You. I'm going to be doing my predictions for UFC Fight Night 64, Gonzaga vs. Crow Cop 2, which happens on April 11th. Overall, um, there's some good mixed in with the bad here. Pretty much, you know, decent prospects. Some of the UFC newcomers, are, you know, I'm not too impressed with, like, Taylor Lapless versus Rocky Lee. Eh. Sago versus Mandel isn't a bad fight. I, I'm actually somewhat impressed with Jason Sago. Got three women's fights here. That's uh, that's pretty good, actually. All in straw weight. Got to see Joanne Calderwood, Clyde Gedalia, uh, and Daly. <laughs> and then they have Stitch, Alexander Stitch Albu versus Isabella Badarek. Got a heavyweight fight between two lower level heavyweights. Um. Leon Edwards actually isn't a bad prospect. Sergio Moraes is one of the top Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioners. Mixed bag, you know. I saw Bartosz Fabinski and Gareth McLellan. Nothing to write home about. Blackwoods versus Manuel could be good. The main event could actually be, could have a nice knockout as well. So, uh, let's get started. Okay. So, in the main event, we have Mirko Krokop Filipovic fighting Gabriel Gonzaga. So, Gonzaga has a 16 and 9 record, 7 wins by KO Tico, 9 wins by Sub. He also 7 losses by KO Tico. He's 35 years old. He's, uh, he's about the same height as Krokop. They're both 6'2. Uh, Gonzaga is on a 2 fight losing streak, but he is a finisher. He's never. Um, He's went to the he went to decision, but uh, all of his wins are by finish, and he defeated uh, Kroka by head kick KO back in April twenty uh, two thousand seven. He's a legit Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt with good stand up. He's kind of slow though. He's not quick. He's heavy. You know he has some heavy strikes, uh, kicks, punches. His wrestling's actually not too bad, both offensively and defensively. Um, his cardio is relatively weak. His chin is relatively weak. Um, and like I said, he's not the quickest guy, but he is well rounded. And very experienced, too. Miracle Krokop, Filipovic, 30 and 11 record with two draws and one no contest. 22 wins by KO Tico. Five wins by Sub. He also has five losses by KO Tico and three losses by Sub. He's 40 years old. Like I said, he's 6-2 on a two-fight win streak. He last fought in the UFC back in 2011. What was his last fight? Was it against Roy Nelson? I think he may have been against Roy Nelson. Or he got TKO'd. At his best, he's a strong kickboxer with a strong head kick. Uh, good takedown defense, but his chin is relatively weak. With that said, I mean... When Gondaga plays... Grappler, he's more likely to win, but he can do relatively well in the stand up. Um, I don't really know what Krokop could do differently now that he couldn't do back then. Um, it, it's I kind of just see the same outcome: Gabriel Gonzaga winning by either knockout or submission. I, I just you know, yeah, Gonzaga's chin isn't that great these days, especially these days. Chin's just get worse and worse. Same goes for Krokop, and now he's 40 years old. So, you know, both these guys are not young by any stretch. 40 years old, 35 years old for Gonzaga. Gonzaga's more of a, like a legit heavyweight, whereas Phil, uh, Krokop is like a blown up light heavyweight at this point. You know, heck. Um, you know, we see middleweights starting out as heavyweights and cutting down these days. I mean, it's not uncommon. <laughs> That's how crazy, uh, how, how much bigger fighters are getting these days. Um, yeah, I gotta go with Gonzaga here. Just, he's a bigger fighter. Uh, he can also take it to the ground just as much as he can, uh, Probably fight uh, Krokop standing up at this point as well. Um, Krokop is like a one-sided fighter. He only uses like his left hand or his left kick. 
doesn't really use his lead hand very much. Um, yeah, Gabriel Gonzaga for the win there. Next fight with that, Jan Blackwitch. Or is it Jan? I think it's Jan Blackwitch, but it's Jimmy Manawa. Blackwitch has an 18 and 3 record, 5 wins by KO Tico, 7 wins by Sub, 32 years old. He's pretty tall for a weight class, he's 6'2, whereas Manawa is 6, six foot. Blackwitch has good stand up. Um, one thing about his stand up is he throws a lot of single strikes. Uh, single kick, single punch. I actually really watched his fight with Alir Latifi. It's kind of what happened. He threw a single bar, you know, um, certain single strikes. He managed to get, uh, he threw a body kick, hit a Latifi. Latifi just uh, tried to survive, but then he went down and then uh, got ground and pounded. Like which is the uh, Resident Jiu-Jitsu skills aren't too bad either. They're not anything to write home about, but you know he's competent there. Um, Jimmy Manoa, eighteen and three record. Uh, oh, excuse me, that's Blackwood. Jimmy Manoa, fourteen and one record. Thirteen wins by KO TKO, one win by Sub. His one loss from Alexander Gustafson is by TKO. He's thirty-five years old. Like I said, he's six foot. He last fought. Alexander Gustafson in March 2014. He's never actually been past the second round. Uh, at his best, he has strong Muay Thai, really good knees. He's heavy handed. And his grappling, uh, like his offensive takedowns, are actually improving. I believe that he also said he's going to train at All Stars with uh, Gustafson after they fought. So, um, you know, he's training out of All Stars Gym. Um, tough for me to say, you know, they're both primarily stand-up fighters. Um, you know, Blackwoods has more wins by submission. He just seems more adept at, uh, the stand-up. Um, well, a, yeah, I can't actually say Blackwoods is a stand-up fighter. You know, he can, he'll take fights to the ground, too. Uh, Manoa definitely is a stand-up fighter. I can imagine this fight will be primarily held in the stand-up anyways. That's probably what, what I was going for. Um, tough for me to say. Like I said, I, with, with Blackwoods, I'm not... He hits hard, but I'm not big that he throws single strikes. Um, Manoa, pretty heavy-handed guy. Pretty explosive guy as well. I'm leaning more towards Jimmy Manoa to, for the win here. I think he's just a little... Uh, for one thing, I think he's just uh, probably the better athlete. Uh, just a little more explosive. And, you know, it's like athletic and explosive. Right? And, uh, I know, like, Goldberg uses that term all the time. But it's true with Manoa, you know? Um, and, and his grappling is improving. So I am going to go with Jimmy Manoa uh, for the win there. If he can get in close to and maybe work his knees, um, I think he has a really good shot here. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, if, if Manuel can get in the inside. Next one of that, Bartosz Fabinski fights Gareth McLellan. Okay, so for every fighter that was making their UFC debut, I did watch footage of them, at least one fight. At the very least, I watched one fight of theirs. Rewatched a couple other guys uh, just to see what they got. Um, but yeah, so I saw footage of both these guys. Gareth McLellan, the last, the only footage I saw from him was back in 20, so a fight of his back in 2011. That went four rounds. McLellan has a 12 and 2 record, two wins by KO Tico, nine wins by Sub. He's 33 years old on a six fight win streak. It is his first fight in the UFC. He is an EFC Africa veteran, and I, I want to even go so far as to say all of his fights are at EFC Africa. Same with like Iran Potts was like an EFC veteran. What I saw from him, I can't say I particularly liked. I particularly liked. Um, he has a decent offensive takedown game. His takedowns, or his ground and pound was decent. He did lose position when he was on top. He did lose position here and there. Uh, the stand-up was nothing to write home about either. Bartosz Fabinski, 11-2 record, 8 wins by KO Tico, 3 wins by decision, 20 years old, on a 4-fight win streak. He is taking this fight on short notice over his first fight in the UFC. 
Uh, you know, Fabinski actually, from what I saw from his videos, um, he's a guy that is primarily looking to strike to get into the clinch. But he doesn't necessarily, like, it's, like, you know, he'll bull rush into the clinch, but it's not that sloppy, I guess. I, I, I know it sounds weird, but, like, that's the thing. He has good offensive takedowns. He pushes a, his opponents up against the cage, and he's really relentless about getting his takedowns. His strength, from what I saw, I watched, like, what, two or three? I think I watched three fights of his, actually. Uh, one of them, some of them are pretty recent, too. Um, he should have. His strength is ground and pound. He likes to do, throw ground and pound. He likes to throw a lot of ground and pound. Uh, his overall clinch striking, though, wasn't that bad. He had some good knees from the clinch. Uh, I gotta go with Bartosz Fabinski here. Um, I think he has a solid enough game. You know, maybe even we'll be able to get some more wins in the UFC. Garrick McLellan, honestly, I, I you know, it, it just looks really unrefined. Um... I mean, I only saw a fight from 2011, but, um, you know, there was nothing about his game from what I did see that was particularly impressive. Uh, it's a bit sloppy. You know, I, I don't know if the African, so South Africa's African scene is really that strong either. Um... Uh, if Ruan Potts showed us anything, I mean, that's heavyweight, so maybe it's a little different. You know, it didn't seem that great. They seemed pretty far behind training-wise and, and just uh, skill set-wise, really. Um, not going to lie, I, I can't really, don't have too high of hopes for McLellan here. Um, but Bartosz Fabinski looked pretty decent, actually, you know. Um... Like I said, his game primarily is like striking into the clinch, getting his opponent against the cage, relentlessly going for a takedown, ground and pound. And it's very constant, and it works. He, he actually makes it work pretty well. So Bartosz Fabinski for the win there. Next fight is that. Joanne Jojo Calderwood fights uh, Mary Knott, the Iron Woman Mirage. Yeah, Mraz has a 5-0 undefeated record, 1 win by Tico, 4 submission wins by Armbar. She's 23 years old, and she's never been past the second round. It'll be her first fight in the UFC. She is a finisher. Her boxing is decent, but it kind of becomes brawling. She does have good armbars and then a decent grappling game. But overall, from what I saw, she's still very green. You know, just... There's that sloppy and untechnical um, way of fighting that you, you you tend to see with you know relatively new uh, uh, female mixed martial artists and actually just even on the male side it's like that too. Uh, but she she appeared to be relatively green. John Caldwell with nine and zero undefeated record, four wins by Kertiko, five wins by decision. Trains out of Dinky Ninjas. She's pretty much the most notable fighter out of there. Uh, she has some strong Muay Thai, but what does that mean in regards to her? It's the clinch. It's not really the kicks, not really the punches, but the clinch. Once she gets in the clinch, she has really strong knees and strong elbows. If she can get her opponent against the cage in the clinch, she can do some work. Takedown defense is solid. Her stand-up defense is actually kind of weak. Uh, she is not a good boxer. I mean, she is weak at boxing range. She she gets tagged actually a good amount of times. See all see all he ham in the last fight, man, to bust up her nose. Emily Kagan was even hitting her uh, a couple of times here and there. Uh, she's not great at boxing range. Her range is in the clinch. With that said, I love Johnny Calderwood. One of my favorite fighters out there. Uh, she's definitely more refined than Mraz. I don't think Mraz can get the fight to the ground. Um, Calderwood's not the strongest on the ground. There's only a few times I've seen her on the ground. So one time against uh, Kagan, she got uh, an ultimate fighter. And then she got Kamara by Rose Namajunas in the ultimate fighter. 
Otherwise, I can still keep the fight standing, work or clinch, uh, clinch game, maybe bully Morales against the cage, and uh, work her knees and elbows uh, for the win. So, uh, Joanne Calderwood for the win there. Okay, on the fight pass prelims, Aisling, uh, or is it Aisling? Isn't it like Aisling, Ace the Bash, Daisley? Ugh. Jeez, that was bad. Aisling, Ace the Bash, Daily fights Claudia, Claudinha, Gadalia. Okay, Gadalia has a 12 and 1 record. That one loss is by Joanna Champion, Young Jacek. Um. She has two wins by Kortiko, six wins by Sub. Twenty-six years old, training out of Nova Unio. She is big for one fifty-five or one fifty-five, one fifteen. My God, my, man, I am just all over the place today. Big for straw weight. <laughs> she is a legit Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt with good wrestling. She can really muscle her way into a takedown. Actually, um. Her takedown defense is solid. She has good top control as well. And her stand up's actually good. It's not great, but it is good. Daly has a 15 and 5 record. Five wins by KO Tiko. Eight wins by Sub. 27 years old on a two fight win streak. Most recently beating uh, Astro Girl, uh, Alex Chambers. She trains out of SBG Ireland with the likes of Conor McGregor. Um, she is. On a technical level, she's not great. What she has is resilience and grit. She's tough and gritty and resilient. She's always pushing forward. Her overall grappling game is good, but she does lose positions on the ground. She's a brawler through and through, but she has a good chin, so she can get away with a lot of things. Um, that's the same with Daly. She can get away with things because of X Factor. She has a good chin, lots of heart. She's tough and gritty and resilient. Those are her strengths. On a technical level and skill level, she's not a great striker. As a grappler, she's good, but she tries to kind of bully in a, in a sense, you know? But it doesn't always work. More technical uh, grapplers tend to beat her. Um, back in 125 when she fought a Bob Hontak, you know? Just better wrestler, you know? Uh, man has hit some ground and pound on her, you know, she tried to scramble out and whatnot, but, you know, it just wasn't working, you know. But Daly's actually beaten some pretty good level competition. I want to say, did she beat Jessica I? I think she did. Nonetheless, uh, I gotta go with Claudia Gadalia to win this one. I think she can do one to stand up. The thing that Gadalia has is she's really big for weight class, and I can see her get the takedowns and utilize her superior grappling for the win. Maybe even take the back, too. Um, so, Claudia Gadalia for the win there. Uh, one of these two fights, Caldwood versus Moraz or Gadalia versus Daly, it's probably going to be. If, if Gadalia wins or Caldwood wins, one of those two if they win, will probably get a shot at Joanna Young Jacek. Um, you know, Claudia Gadalia lost to her, but it was a pretty contentious A lot of people thought Gadalia won. I did too. John Cottlewood would be a fresh challenger, and they are having an event in Scotland pretty soon, so... Kind of thinking if Cottlewood wins, they're gonna go Cottlewood Young Jacek. Um, we shall see. Next fight that Paul Pollock fights Sheldon Westcott. Pollock has a ten and one record, six wins by Kortiko, three wins by Sub, twenty nine years old. Oh, twenty six years old. Man, I am off. Three wins by Sub, twenty six years old. Turned out a Gracie Baja Lods with uh, Carolina Kalkovic. I remember his fight, um he, he fought ah oh, jeez. Was it German guy? Um, that was last fight. He didn't look that good. He, he got taken down a lot and got controlled. And I totally forgot the name of the guy he fought. He's the guy who came back to the UFC, fought Powlock. Um, well, Powlock, you know, his stand up's good, his grappling's decent. Uh, Sheldon Westcott, 8 and 2 record with one draw, three wins by KO Tico, three wins by Sub. He's 30 years old. He last fought in April 2014. So we have a one-year layoff. 
a lot of the footage I remember from him, besides him getting um, ground and pounded from Elias Theodoro, was a guy that you have to like weather the storm. He just goes in, has good stand up and good presented skills. He'll go charge at you, maybe force, you know, strike, force a takedown. Really uses up all his energy in the first round. His cardio isn't that great. He doesn't have enough cardio to totally fight that way. So it's tough for me to say. I, I'm relatively unimpressed with both guys. Um, not gonna lie, it's hard to see it from a skill point perspective, uh, skills perspective, um, because you know the lower level guys, they they both have weaknesses. Um, I'm gonna go with Westcott here. Can't say I'm too um, confident in this pick though. I don't know, kind of a pick and fight for me, I guess, to be perfectly honest with you. Next fight after that, Sergio Moraes fights Gassan Umalatov. Umalatov, 15 and 4 record with one draw, two wins by KRTK, seven wins by sub, 32 years old. He is trading wins and losses, even though he fought Cathal Pendred in his last fight, and I totally thought he should have got the win. Trains on a fight night's team with the likes of Bellator heavyweight champion Vitaly Minikov. I believe Baga, um, Ali Baga Itunov also trained there as well. Um, I think now he probably trains out like Jackson Wingo down now. Uh, Ali Baga Itunov. I mean, uh, with Umalatov, uh, stand up's good and his, you know, he's a good grappler as well. Probably not as good as Morales, but he's taking this fight on short notice. Sergio Morales, 8-2 record, 7 wins by sub, 1 win by decision, 32 years old on a 2-fight win streak. He last fought in August 2013. He is a top Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner. Watch him fight uh, Neil Magny. That was a cool thing. He had a hard time getting takedown on Magny, but once he got it, Oh, and he transitioned to the mat. What is it? Transitioned to the mount. Went for the triangle. Or something like that. It was really cool. Was elbowing. Getting elbows from the tri you know, from the triangle. Trying to adjust the triangle. Finally adjust the triangle and I got it. Good stuff. Just a top Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner. His offensive takedown uh, ability is decent. You know, with a lot of his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioners, not great takedown artists, but he's decent. Stand up's more reckless. It's a tool to be used to get into like the clinch and whatnot. Um, with Morris being out for so long, and also, I mean, he still has a liability in stand up. He, he does not have great stand up, but that you can't deny that guy's ground game. It's really good. Um, you know, if you can get the fight to the ground. Uh, I, I think he can get the win, so I'm gonna go with Sergio Moraes here. You know, Umalatov. I mean, some of his wins, he's trading wins and losses right now. I think, like, he beat Paulo Tiago. That was one of his wins, and then he lost his last fight before that, and I totally forgot who against who. Um, I think it's Magny, right? Yeah, yeah, he fought Neil Magny, right? Yeah, I think it was against Magny. Lost against Magny. Beat Paul Tiago and then lost to Cathal Pendred, you know, so. Um, yeah, I gotta go with Sergio Moraes for the win. I think he can get the fight to the ground and use his superior grappling and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills to get the win there. Next fight after that, Seth Bazinski fights Leon Edwards. Bazinski has a 19-12 and 12 right record. 7 wins by KO Tico, 10 wins by Sub. He has three losses by KRTK and five losses by submission. 33 years old. He's 6'3". He's on a two-fight losing streak. Training out of power MMA. He's only won one of his last five fights. That one was actually against Neil Magny. In a fight that a lot of people thought Neil Magny won. He, lost, he got knocked out by uh, Alan Joban. Um, I was counting his fingers when he got knocked out by Brian Melanson. Um... He fought Tiago Alves to a decision, which is actually a really entertaining fight. Brzezinski is big for 170. Stand-up is good. He is pretty heavy-handed. 
and has presented to the skills are solid as well. He's kind of like a go out and uh, live, live by the sword, die by the sword type of fighter though. His chin is a bit questionable at this point. Leon Edwards, 8-2 record, 4 wins by KO Tico, 2 wins by Sub. Um, what I can say about, about him, I like his stand-up. He's actually relatively heavy-handed. And his takedown defense is good too. His problem is in his stand-up, he's a relatively low output striker. And he throws a lot of single strikes. It, con it definitely cost him a lot when he fought Claudio Silva. Granted, guys who like Claudio Silva is such a tough out, man, for like new prospects to come into UFC. Like guys like Claudio Silva, Kenny Robertson, Mike Pierce, Ryan LaFleur, Court McGee, George Sullivan. I uh, new prospects have like the they're the hardest guys to fight, you know. Um, and there's an argument to be said that Leon Edwards should have gotten the win over Claudio Silva. But nonetheless, I'm going to go with Leon Edwards for the win here. I think he's a better technical striker. Uh, I hope he throws more combinations. I'm not big that he throws single strikes. But I can see him catching Seth Bozinski. Um And his take that down defense is good enough where I think he can... Uh, where I, I think he can uh, defend takedowns from Bozinski. And... Uh, Hopefully beat him up on the feet. So Leon Edwards for the win there. Next fight. After that, Anthony Hamilton fights. I can't pronounce his last name. Daniel Omel Lanzuk. I'll just say Omel Lanzuk. Because I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Omel Lanzuk. 16-4 record with one draw and one no contest. Two wins by KO Tico. Nine wins by Sub. 32 years old. He's not too tall for a heavyweight. He's 6 foot. Whereas Anthony Hamilton is 6'5". He last fought in April 2014. Um, he fought that one guy with a really cool name. <laughs> I totally forgot what it was. Jeez, <laughs> uh, uh, oh man, I should have checked. Um, I remember his stand-up actually wasn't too bad. It was decent. And his grappling skills aren't too bad either. He's kind of like good, decent to good everywhere, but not particularly great at any one aspect of MMA. Anthony Hamilton has a 13-4 and record. 7 wins by K.O. Tico. 1 win by Sub. That's his 2 losses by K.O. Tico and 2 losses by Sub. 34 years old. He's big. 6'5". Uh, trains out of Jackson Winkle John. He's trading wins and losses. Um, he lost... He lost his last fight, right? To... Um, Jeez, I forgot the guy's name. He beat Jared Rorschach. Um Jeez. Andre Alexander. Uh, he also has a tough name to pronounce. Oh, man. I forgot he lost you. But he beat Ron Potts, right? Yeah, then he beat Ron Potts. Um, he, the thing with the Hamilton, he, he's got a decent clinch. Stand-up's decent, and his ground and pound's good. Nothing's, you know, both these guys are lower-level heavyweights. I think that uh, Omar Lanzuk's the worst of the two. Uh, he's going to be the smaller fighter as well. Didn't train at a great camp or anything like that. I'll go with Anthony Hamilton for the win there. Next fight after that, Alexander Stitch Albu fights Isabella Badarek. Uh, Badarek has a 5-2 and two record with all 5 of her wins by submission. She's only 23 years old on a 3-fight win streak. Over here, first fight in the UFC. I saw, like, a couple fights from her. Um, still kind of green. Uh, her clinch takedown game was pretty good. Uh, her overall grappling wasn't too bad. Her striking wasn't very good, though. I remember there was one fight... I remember watching one fight and she was getting outboxed pretty good and then she just like got the clinch and got the takedown. Striking was kind of weak and her striking defense, her stand-up defense wasn't anything special as well. Alexander Stitch Albu, 1-0 undefeated record. Even though like there's some, somewhere that said she has like five, she's supposed to be 5-0 or something like that. But she's 1-0 according to like Fight Finder. 
with that one win being by TKO. She's 24 years old. She actually trains at a Red Fury fight team. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I, I believe Fedor used to train there. Uh, she trains at another gym too. I forgot his name. It'll be her first fight in the UFC. She does have a karate background. I did watch that one fight that was on the Fight Finder. Uh, she has a stocking style footwork. Her stand-up is actually not too bad though. She doesn't like... You know how you judge good stand-up for like new uh, female fighters? If they don't swing and cling. Like seriously, if you don't like swing to the clinch, I consider your stand-up ahead of a lot of people. And hers is actually not too bad. Um, she had a stocking, uh, kind of stocking footwork, you know, kind of flat-footed. Um, she actually threw a good inside leg kick against her opponents pretty quick. Her clinch knees are actually not too bad. And her grappling actually isn't too bad. Uh, so I saw one of her grappling matches. Um, didn't too bad, matched her opponent. And actually I saw that one fight that's in Fight Finder that she's in. Not, you know, was, uh, you know, showed some her stand up, got to fight to the ground, mounted her opponent. Um, I mean, this one's tough to say in the sense that they're both new. So, I, you know, they're both still really green. I'm not going to lie, though. I was actually kind of impressed by what I saw from Albu. Uh, she just looked less green. I, I expected her, considering her lack of experience, to be a little more green. Just like, and what I mean by green is just sloppy. I'm just sloppy and in a very untechnical way. That's what I mean by green. You know? And with Badarak, she is like that really prototypical green fighter, you know, who's been fighting like regional level opposition, who's like, her, her takedown skills from the clinch is, can work on that level, but it, I don't know if it'll work on a higher level, at least with Albu, her stand-up that looked like solid enough, it, it was just, you know, it was good enough. Her grappling looked decent, you know, it wasn't bad, she wasn't losing position on the ground, she seemed to know how to maintain a mount, <laughs> you know, uh, like I said, a lot of these green fighters can't maintain a mount, they'll get mount, or take the back, and get like reversed, like really easily too, she actually looked like she can maintain a mount, you know, like I said, it didn't sound that great, but like, I, I I remember reading about her signing and I was like, oh man, she has like no fights. She's going to suck. And then I saw footage of her and I was like, hey, she's not half bad. Like I said though, but she's still new. So I don't really know what else to expect from her. But nonetheless, I am going to go with Alexander, St Alexander Stitch Albu for the win here. Next one that, Marcin Bendel fights Jason Sago. Bendel has a 13-3 and record. One win by Tico, 12 wins by Sub. He has two losses by K.O. Tico, tw 25 years old, trains out of Drysdale Jiu-Jitsu. He is a finisher. He has strong Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills, especially with his leg locks. His stand-up's really weak. He got blasted. As his first round in the UFC, he got blasted by Marbek Taisumov. Jason Sago, 10-2 and two record, two wins by K.O. Tico, eight wins by Sub, 29 years old. Sago is a good wrestler with good Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills, and stand-up's average. Um, here's the thing with Bendel, like, like a lot of his fights end in the first round by submission. Now, that says two things. One, he can pull guard and, and just, you know, if you want to go to the ground with him, he's going to go for the leg lock. And maybe his opponent will fall for it in the UFC level, maybe they won't, you know. Sago is, uh, from what I've seen, primarily like a wrestler type. Um, you know, primarily a grappler, so he could fall for the leg lock. But you know, the other thing is though, is if there's so many ones by like heel hook and, and leg locks and whatnot in the regional scene, it, it, you also question the level of competition that he's fought. With Sago, he beat Josh Shockley. He actually did really well against Paul Felder, and I am now very high on Paul Felder. Um, he fought the game, a game that he should, you know, most guys probably should fight, or most grapplers should fight against Paul Felder. 
He made it ugly. He made it grinding. <laughs> he'd get him up against a cage, try and take him down. It was really unsuccessful, but he'd try again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he'd get him down, but he couldn't keep him down. You know, and up losing. You know, be he got beaten up on the feet. Actually, wobbled, fell out one, uh, near the end of the third round. But um, yeah, I think Jason Sager is actually not half bad. <laughs> To be perfectly honest with you, Martin Bandel, I mean, really, I, I think he only has, like, I think he, he really only has his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to work on. He might even just pull guard, too, or he might work a leg lock, but, um, and it might work, you know, like I said. But I'm going to go with Jason Sago, because I, I think he's at least a more well-rounded fighter. Um, let's just hope he can, if he does this, if Sago decides to take to fight the ground or to fight does hit the ground somehow, uh, hopefully Sago can avoid those submissions, uh, from Bandel. And Bandel's gonna go for them too, you know. So Jason Sago for the win there. And finally, Taylor Laplace fights Rocky Lee. Rocky Lee, 3-0, undefeated record, 2 wins by submission, 1 win by decision, 27 years old. Trains out of AKA Thailand with the likes of Mike Swick and Wang Sai. It's his first fight in the UFC. From what I see from him, I've seen two fights from him. He fought uh, Sun Kick Kim or something like that. Um, that was his la la latest pro MMA bout. He also fought an Ultimate Fighter China, if I'm not mistaken. Um, what I saw from him, his stand up was just decent. Scrabbling wasn't too bad, though. Um, when he fought the uh, Kim, he, he had a really hard time taking the fight to the ground. Taylor Laplace, eight and one record, six wins by sub, two wins by decision. Twenty-two years old on a three-fight win streak. Trains out a cross fight. Guys that train out there would be like Christian Ampumbu. I believe Tom Dukenwall, which who's one of the top uh, MMA prospects in the world, uh, trains there as well. But Dukenwall trains like all over the place. It'll be Lapsus' first fight in the UFC. So I saw, I remember I saw him fight one fight that he lost. And then I saw another fight that he won. What I saw from him, Santa wasn't too bad. He did actually use combinations. Kind of stayed in the pocket too long and would get countered. His takedown defense against that one guy he fought, and I totally forgot his name, wasn't very good. He was getting taken down a lot. His overall grappling skills are decent, but like, like I remember at one point, like he got a Camaro and he's like really high. He's not like I don't even remember if his knees were on the ground. He didn't pinch his knees together to, to make no space to scramble out of the Camaro. So like he's still leaving space f um, for opponents to scramble out of when he goes for like submissions and stuff. I gotta say I. I I've been re I'm relatively unimpressed with both of these guys. Not gonna lie, they're both still young and have capability of improvement. Um, and I saw Rocky Lee's first fight, a uh, pro MMA bout. And I take his opponent to the ground, passed him out, ground and pounded him, got the rear naked choke. Um, and then when he fought the Korean guy, he didn't look very good. I mean, he tried to take him down. He had a hard time taking him down. Stand up didn't look great. His stand up seemed to be used to just initiate the clinch. And his overall, like, offensive takedown ability was decent at best. Laughless is kind of the same. Like, I kind of like Laughless's stand up better than Rocky Lee's. Um, I'm not big on Laughless's takedown defense, though. He is a decent grappler. It's tough to say. They're both like kind of lower level new fighters. I'm gonna go Taylor Laplace to win this one. Um, like I said, though, you know they're still new. They both they both have holes in their game. They don't have like terribly refined skill sets or anything like that. So Taylor Laplace for the win. Okay, to recap the main card, I have Mirko Krokop. Oh. To recap, I have Gabriel Gonzaga over Mirko Krokop Filipovic. Jimmy Manoa beating Jan Blackwich. Bartosz Fabinski over Gareth McLellan. And Joanne Cardwood beating uh, Marina uh, Moroz. 
On the prelims, I have Claudia Gadalia beating Aisling Daly, Sheldon Westcott over Pawlak, Sergio Marais over Gassam Umalatov, Leon Edwards beating Seth Bozinski, Anthony Hamilton beating Daniel Omalanzuk, Alexandra Albu beating Isabella Baderak, Jason Sago over Marcin Bandel, and Taylor Lapalus over Rocky Lee. So that's it for my predictions for UFC Fight Night 64, Gonzaga vs. Crow Cop 2. If you have any comments, just leave them below. And that's it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.